If you could have any superpower, what would it be? And maybe a more important question would be, which one do you already have? Because we all have them. Well, this is a new one. All right, cool. My story is probably not that unusual. As Danny said this morning, a lot of us were counted out. Not really meant to make it. So there you find yourself on a precipice. You're going to make a run at it? You're going to go for it or not? The obligatory kid's, kid's story. I was named after some spiritual healing flower. Uh, I grew in my parents' backyard. Got beat up a lot as a kid because of it. But I think that I earned it and made me who I am today. Both parents were artists. I only knew one of them, my single parent mother. She's the first person that defined the word hero to me. When I was in the third grade, my mom was working three or four degrees, three or four jobs to get her first degree in her family, putting herself through school. One day our neighbor came over, asked if he could take our photograph. I remember sitting there on the steps in this house that was soon bulldozed, thinking to myself, wow, how does that thing work? I've always been documenting ever since I was a kid. I got my first camera that later that year. My mom scraped up enough money. It's my first and favorite Christmas present to this day. I documented the shortcuts on the way to school, school crossing guards, looking for playful light and secret tunnels and unsuspecting heroes. We'd go to the fishing store, or we should go, we'd go to the uh, local supermarket, and I remember just hanging out in the fishing aisle waiting for some unsuspecting guy to come along, and I'd ambush him and say, hey, are you going fishing today? Where are you going? In the hopes that I would get invited. I was, I was the kid that could organize team sport in our neighborhood in 10 minutes, both sides of a football game, because I wanted to ensure that I would be invited by creating the invitation. But creativity is not just about the arts. It's vulnerable, it's daring. I'd walk through the art school talking to local to the, to the grad students about pottery, and talking this, about painting, glass blowing, and so forth. Obviously, public speaking is not my superpower. <laughs> but creativity is always misunderstood as a concept. It's like a nice to have, like a painting above your fireplace. But the arts imagine us to bring to light what's trapped inside of our subconscious. It allows us to imagine a reality that has yet to exist. In the 1500s, Leonardo da Vinci theorized the calculator, solar power, and the helicopter. In the mid-1700s, Ben Franklin discovered how to harness electricity with a key on a kite string. In the early 1900s, Einstein applied the theory of relativity to model the structure of the universe, forever changing how we see the world around us. These innovators asked how and why, and sought new perspectives. Simply, they got creative. When you think that the written language was invented over 5,000 years ago, you consider the potency of how creative thinking has increased dramatically over time and exponentially in the last 100 years as technology continues to evolve. Young Kim at the College of William Mary discovered that creativity scores had steadily been rising just like IQs until 1990. Unfortunately, she also discovered that since 1990, American creativity has plummeted. Many are identifying this as a creativity crisis. Last year, IBM ran a poll of 1,500 CEOs. They identified creativity as the number one leadership competency of the future. Number one. And the Europeans get this. They understand it. In fact, they called 2009 the year of creativity and innovation. But what are Americans doing about it? Standardized tests, no child left behind, and limiting arts from our schools, limiting creative thinking.
That's a piece I directed for local Music Villa. It's a cool story about how music affects everything, engineering, math, science, it teaches the brain to work differently. After graduating film school 15 years ago, I moved to Los Angeles to direct. I remember I was moving to the epicenter of creative geniuses. I was so excited. Everywhere I was going to go, I was going to meet amazing people. And then one day I'm standing there at this Hollywood Hills party overlooking the city, thinking to myself, where are they? And this voice next to me said, who? And I'm like, whoa, did I say that out loud? <laughs> Turns out he was a Czechoslovakian composer that was teaching deaf kids how to read and play music. And I was blown away. I'm like, wow, how? Can they feel the vibrations of the music? Or is it just mechanical? Is it for their own enjoyment? Or is it just for the enjoyment of others? Is it resonance? Is it just lots of questions? And the very next night, I met this scientist from Helsinki that was on this elite team piecing the ozone layer back together. He theorized that by 2035, 150 million diseases would be avoided if we could patch that hole in the sky. I'm like, is it working? You're like a superhero, you're saving the planet. As often, you ask the universe and it shall be revealed. And there are people around us that are amazing everywhere. So later that year, that summer of 1999, after meeting every single night, someone new, someone amazing that inspired me, Superdudes was born in my garage. Real life superheroes. Because superheroes aren't simply what we just see on the big screen. They're everywhere around us. They're our teachers and the people that inspire us. In fact, there are extraordinary people everywhere. Most importantly, to find one, look within. We began by visiting children's hospitals and charities and school districts, burn units, asking kids, what makes you super? What is that one thing within you that makes you different? And you have weaknesses too. You have to have a sense of humor about them. How do you navigate your weakness? So by encouraging people to look within themselves, they could find and express those qualities that enrich themselves and their community. And every kid, no matter what their situation in life, in life would light up as they answered. They realized that by being asked to define what makes them super, they could see their aspirational best self. And we discovered at that moment that when you define your best self, suddenly you're closer to becoming it. The process of discovering their super self and bringing their super self to life was immensely empowering and enlightening. Trading cards started hitting the shelf with them right next to their heroes. Letters were being sent to us from teachers and parents and child psychologists. I remember one kid named Max. His mother sent us a letter saying, once Max was supernated, suddenly he could fly, even though he was autistic and in a wheelchair. As we searched the world for amazing people, the community grew. Scientists, educators, musicians, engineers, and it evolved from my garage to 1.5 million real-life heroes in three years and became one of the pioneer social networking sites, pre-MySpace and pre-Facebook. My super did was Synapse, power of the dream. His motto, you'll see it when you believe it. You can dream things into reality. Weaknesses were narcolepsy and ADD, which still are. So my nemesis was Buddy Bland. He was the master of chaos and distraction. But what do you do once your hero is born? You live it. You join the Hero Legion online, and you gather knowledge nuggets. Knowledge nuggets were the digital economy, and the more knowledge you would gain, the higher you start rising at the karma counter, which worked like a stock exchange, except this one was a little bit more stable. Every message, recruit, action was tracked. The more knowledge you'd get, the higher you start rising up the karma counter. This was our first master plan, the business plan that we pitched. But that's not the cool part. The cool part was this prompt that you would get. How do you save the world? You start with where you are. You type in your zip code, and you're given 25 things you can do within a five-mile radius of where you live to make the world a better place, starting with your own backyard. So it began a groundswell of amazing stories. And each super was rewarded for donating a Saturday to a local nonprofit. And the stories were powerful, and they varied from kids doing neighborhood cleanups and teaching adults to read and, and visiting you know, other sick children in the hospital. So in less than a year after launching the Challenge Finder and the Start With Where You Are program, we had 10.1 billion knowledge nuggets that were earned and a lot of stories. As Steve Jobs put it, 
I longed to make a ding in the universe. And we did with Super Dudes, because people got married through that network, and they're still out there on Facebook right now. They've created their own uh, communities online, just completely rogue, because I'll tell you why in a second. But we saw what it looked like to transform neighborhoods. And most importantly, we saw what it looked like to transform human beings and communities. What we realized is that we weren't just on a mission to find superheroes, because inherently everyone is born super. The power exists within each of us. You just need to search for it, define it, nurture it. And looking back on that chapter of my life, I realized that for me, the same thread that wove through every single person that we met was creativity. Creative people have always led the charge in solving and solving the challenges of the world. But where do the influences go to get re-inspired? Where do they go get refueled? That place exists. When we sold Superdudes to Fox in 2004, I moved back here to Bozeman and founded Hatch. Hatch became the next platform of finding real-life heroes that were making the world a better place. Hatch is an annual four-day experience designed to cross-pollinate today's creative doers and thinkers. It's like a think tank meets summer camp. Some people call it a festival, but it's a little bit more intellectual than that and a lot more fun. Photographers, engineers, entrepreneurs, and you name it. It's all based on mentorship, where someone else's hindsight can become your foresight. Because each of us can remember a time in our lives when whether it's a, a word or a sentence or a gesture that changed our life's path forever. Eight years, 5,000 students, 500 mentors later, and a website that's been visited by 154 countries, we've made a difference one person at a time, as Melissa Wolf said earlier. So you think about creativity, it's like, what are the metrics? Well, how many people have been inspired by a song by John Lennon? Or how many people have been inspired by a story by Dr. Seuss? All of these things are elements in building our lives. And if we can be, if we can hatch the next Jackson Brown or the next John Lennon or the next Annie Leibovitz here in Bozeman, Montana, and look at the people that we've already spoken today, then we're saving the world, we're making it a better place. As Jeff Leitner puts it, Hatch makes us creatively more dangerous. By bringing these people together, they inspire each other to go off and do greater work. People like Brendan Boyle from IDEO, a global think tank. They designed the first mouse for Apple. They designed clean water filtration systems. They design human organ transport systems. And then you have Christian Long, who's shaping how our future leaders are learning, and Bita Shafapur, who is a socially conscious filmmaker, bringing awareness through media and the arts. And Rajiv Kukarni, who he and his team invented 3D printing. Like, what's 3D printing? Well, if you can imagine it, you can print it. And it's being applied in every single industry you can imagine. There's no longer metal dental braces. There's no longer, uh, now every shoe can be fit custom for someone who has foot problems. And surgery success rates have more than doubled. Well, why? Rajiv says it's just the beginning. They just never stop asking questions. They never stop asking why or what if. I often hear people say, I'm not creative. Well, of course, we all know that that's not true because everyone's creative. It's in every industry. Again, think about who's been here today speaking. Think about who's still coming up to speak. It's an amazing group. And everyone took a creative look at their industry. Preschool children, on average, ask their parents about 100 questions a day. Where does the white go when the snow melts? How do birds fly? Why do I fart? <laughs> Sometimes parents just wish it would stop, and unfortunately, it does. It does stop. People stop encouraging the questions. That's right about the time when motivation and engagement plummets. Creativity is about living the question. It's about wondering what if. It's about generating ideas. Because creativity is a precursor to innovation and the cornerstone of entrepreneurship. And now more than ever, our world needs creative thinkers. The world needs you. It's up to us to keep asking questions and to keep finding new perspectives. 
John Maeda is the president of Rhode Island School of Design and is also a champion in refocusing how our educational system in America should be working. He wants to change STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, to STEAM by injecting the arts back into the equation. Because the arts and creativity is the building block of innovation. According to Maeda, if we as a country are successful in changing STEM to STEAM, we'll witness a return to the integrity of craft, the humanity of authorship, and the rebalancing of our virtual and physical spaces. Simply, we'll experience a renaissance. Creativity is the differential between survive and thrive. And my story, like many of yours, is one of accessing the hero that you've hoped you've become. But being a hero is nearly impossible. Every day I look to find strengths in others to balance my shortcomings. And so it's up to all of us to find, nurture, plug into fellow heroes, collaborate with them, encourage them. Back to the original question, what superpower do we all share? Well, we all share love, we all share creativity. So what is your special power? Some final thoughts here. Rediscover your inner kiddo. Find the fun again, because creativity is as much about the joy of the process as the amazement and the results. It's a better way to live. It's more enjoyable, delightful, and playful. Can you be creative in your own life and find a new perspective? Unleash your inner da Vinci. Be the key on the kite string. And never stop asking questions. By asking what if, you allow yourself to be vulnerable, potentially embracing failure and welcoming the unknown. Live in the question and be your own superhero because creativity is everyone's superpower. Thank you.